My name is Tony Sosby, and uh, I'm a machinist at uh, James Tool in Morton, North Carolina. Uh, it got so bad I couldn't walk. I just couldn't walk anymore. So uh, I went to the doctor. They uh, they told me that uh, the, about the problem I had with both hips, and they both had to be replaced. And they said I was young for this kind of surgery. That normally the, the the type of hip that they put in lasts about 20 years, but they put a ceramic hip in me. It's going 30 plus years. Hip replacement's a very successful procedure folks have been using for treating hip arthritis and chronic hip pain for many years. Since about the 1960s, it's been very commonly used. There are about 300,000 people a year that undergo hip replacement in the United States at this point. The traditional way to do a hip replacement is to make an incision on the side of the leg and open up the joint where we replace the ball and the socket. Uh, to create a new joint that has smooth new metal and plastic materials that can take the place of the old worn out joint. In a way it's kind of like replacing the tires on the car when they're worn out. Uh, the anterior approach to hip replacement is something a little bit newer in the United States. In the United States it really didn't catch on until the late 90s and it's been used here for about 15 years very successfully. The advantage of the anterior hip replacement compared to the tr more traditional techniques that we've been using is that we do a little less damage to the muscles on the inside of your uh, inside of your body around the hip than we did the old way. The more traditional hip replacement is still very successful and commonly used, but it requires that we either cut some bone or some muscle off of the areas around the joint, and this requires a little bit longer time for healing and recovery and some restrictions in how you can use your leg after surgery. The anterior approach to hip replacement is a uses a smaller incision placed a little bit more to the front of the hip rather than the side or the back and this allows us to use a, an area between muscles rather than having to remove them from the bone. By not removing the muscles we can leave them in place it allows for a faster recovery we can still get into the hip joint and access it and, and replace the ball in the socket the way we like to but it means that we don't have to keep the same kind of restrictions on you when you're done um, we let you get back on your feet right away and don't tell you don't move or don't bend or don't twist this way. We just let you get back to doing your normal activities. Tying your shoes, picking something up off the floor, uh, rolling over in bed, using a standard commode, getting in and out of the car, really nothing that we have to be particularly careful about. There was no pain with it at all. It, it was marvelous. I, I was in and out of it and uh, within, within less than a week I was walking them on without crutches, without anything. They got me to walking with a walker immediately and instead of just walking outside and back in, I walked down the hall all the way down to the end of the hall. And instead of gripping my, my walker, I was just holding on to it with two fingers. Avascular necrosis is essentially when the blood flow into the ball dies or is damaged and the, and the ball dies and it collapses and is no longer round. The ball doesn't fit in the socket well and arthritis develops. At the end stage is that the, the joint is worn out and we do a hip replacement. By doing a hip replacement, we essentially take a, a stem of some kind, and this is an example of, of what Tony has. Uh, it's a metal stem that fits inside the upper part of the thigh. We have either a metal or ceramic ball that fits on top of that to replace the ball component of your hip. And then we replace the socket part with a metal shell and usually a plastic liner. And we now have a, a plastic bushing with metal that rotates in any direction your hip needs to move nice and smooth. By, being, by using this anterior approach it gives us the advantage of optimizing the position that we place the cup and the ball at the time of surgery to lower any chances for leg length inequality, for dislocation risk, for stability purposes. This is an acrylic mold of what half of your pelvis might look like, the bones of the edge of the pelvis, the wing of the pelvis, the ischium, and then a sample of the socket in place and the stem inside a little plastic representation of the upper part of the thigh. And once again, it shows that we can, we can rotate the hip, we can abduct it, flex, extend it, and the hip moves smoothly at this point. I guess I was the worst candidate in the world because since I'd never had, had surgery, really, you know, and uh, I never wanted to ever have surgery. I was scared of it. To have it done and to come out so good, so, so easy, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting this other one done and, and, and going on with my life. It just, it's no problem at all. It's, no, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. And uh, there's good, good quality care here, and uh, that makes you feel good about it all, too.
uh, it really is good, a good quality place.